has the metagame shifted, or are we still under the boot of Riscaminator? Hi, my name is Matt, and I wasn't planning on looking at the metagame again until the end of the month, but I skimmed through some challenge results, got curious, and now we're here. We're seeing a lot more diversity of decks so far in April than we did in March, which I think is a good sign. Wasteland Days decks have lost some meta share, and Aether Vile decks have made a bit of a comeback with both D&T and Traditional Goblins seeing some play. Beginning with the league results, as always, I want to disclaim that these results are not a full picture of the metagame, and limited conclusions can be drawn from them. We only know what 5 owed. From April 1st until 14th, we had 264 decks that put up 5 0 results. In leagues, Demir Scaminator is still the most successful deck at just over 11% of results. Turbo Goblins made up almost 8% of these results. 4C and 5C Beans decks made up the third spot with about 6% of the results. Teamer was the most successful Delver variant at just over 5%. When combined with Grixis, Delver made up just under 9% of results, down from over 10% in the month of March. Lands is still a successful deck at just over 4% of these results, and Sultai Beans continues to drop down in popularity, as I think many players are adopting the greedier 4C and 5C Beans decks. For the first time in several months, Death and Taxes, 8Cast, Jeskai Control, and Cephalid Breakfast make up a significant number of these results, which is really, really kind of cool. All of these decks have been present this whole time, but arguably they've been on the fringe of playability, so I'm really glad to see them. I might give Jeskai another whirl, as it's a deck I really enjoy and historically have played a lot of. Welcome to the Spicy Deck Intermission. Do you want to kill your opponents on turn 1 during their upkeep? Have you ever thought Ancestral Recall didn't draw enough cards? Have you ever experienced the pure joy of casting Grape Shot for more than 20 damage? Killaby has been playing this artifact-based Echo of Eon Storm deck that can only really win with this main deck, Grape Shot. Only a single copy of Grape Shot. It's got this cool pseudo engine where Runehorn, Hellkite, and Wheel of Misfortune power up Dream Salvage to draw a huge number of cards, and then Echo of Eons can loop the library until a Grape Shot is lethal. This deck has an extremely low land count of 7. This makes sense, as we also see a playset of Leyline of Anticipation, and lands are the only cards that can't be played on an opponent's turn with a Leyline in play. Killaby has really put together a monster here, and it looks like an absolute blast to play. The challenge metagame is totally different than last month's, and drastically different from the league results from this month as well. We have access to all the decks played through mtgo.com slash decklists, which means that we can draw much more meaningful conclusions regarding deck saturation and performance. Looking at the metagame, we see a shockingly few number of Orcish Bowmasters compared to last month. In challenges, it's dropped in play rate by nearly 12%, making up 27% of the field currently. The four most played decks all contained red, and the fourth most played deck was the only one that played Bowmasters. Combined, these decks made up 34 and a quarter percent of the field. Turbo Goblins was 11% of the field, Teamer Delver right behind it at 10%, Moon Stompy and Grixis Delver each made up roughly 6 to 7% of the field. Below that, we see Lands at 5.5%, Dedicated Reanimator and 4 or 5C Beans decks, Reanimator and Beans each making up roughly 5% each. Dumira Scaminator was only played by 4 and a third percent of players, well down from its roughly 11% representation in March. Rounding out the 2% share and higher, we have Green White Deaths, Salt Eye Beans, Doomsday, and Death and Taxes. I think a lot of people have been wondering if a metagame shift is even possible given how dominant Dumira Scaminator has been since basically mid February through the end of March. That's like a full six weeks. But clearly, I think a metagame shift has happened or is possible. Let's look at some performance metrics to help us understand what's going on here. But first, these conversion rates have been brought to you by the newest flavor of scam, Demir Saga Scam. Demir Saga Scam came in fifth place in the April 7th Challenge 64 event. It looks like a classic Demir Scam list, but it includes four Urza Saga and a small artifact package. It looks super grindy, and I like that Urza Saga can find a currency converter to accrue resources after a scam hand leaves both players hellbound. It also can find something like an Aether Spellbomb or a Nihil Spellbomb for, you know, specific corner case scenarios. I do worry about the mana base stability, as scam decks often play on a Razor's Edge with their land count, and Urza Saga only has three turns in play. Now, back to the stats. Unfortunately, nearly half of the match results from challenges so far this month have not been captured. So I don't feel super comfortable drawing win rate conclusions from this incomplete data set. If you like seeing win rates and you want to help out, please head over to the Legacy Data Collection Project Discord, read the rules, and then share screenshots of challenge results if you play in any. 
Joe Dyer does a really fantastic job of collecting and collating the metagame data, but without match results, win rates just simply can't be calculated. Because I don't want to rely on this incomplete data, we're going to look at X and 2 or better conversion rates as a proxy for performance. This I think can help us draw conclusions around what decks are over or underperforming their metagame share. Between 6 challenge 32s and 2 challenge 64s, we had a total of 464 pilots. Of those pilots, 134 or 28.8% of these players finished their tournaments with an X2 or better record. Turbo Goblins, Teamer Delver, and Moon Stompy all performed slightly better than expected, converting 3-7% to more pilots than the field as a whole. Blue Green White X Beans and Demir Scaminator both performed pretty abysmally, with each converting a third fewer players than expected based off of their metagame presence. Dedicated Reanimator, Green White Depths, Salt Eye Beans all converted the sort of expected number of pilots within a small margin of error. So they each show as like slightly positive there, but it's within a like a fraction of a player being the difference between plus or minus. Doomsday and Death and Taxes came out to play though, each performed well well above expectations. We take a break from our regularly scheduled programming to bring you Salt Eye Beatdown Beans. Do you like value but hate dirtling around? Do you want to attack your opponents with a fish and some monkeys? Check out this deck from Arc4N. They've been playing a Salt Eye Beans deck that's sort of an evolution of a Simic Beans deck that we saw pop up last month. It's kind of like a fair beatdown deck that leverages Thought Scour and Consider to fill the graveyard which is then delved away by Murktide Regent, Gurmag Angler, or Hooting Mandrills. These are all kind of respectable threats that have all seen some level of legacy play, Murktide especially, but then all of them also draw cards off of Beans. We also see an extremely spicy one of Common Deer, which I just can't stop thinking about wanting to cast it on my opponent's Doomsday, and then probably losing the game because I'm bad at Doomsday piles, but it just seems sweet. Anyways, back to the action. Among the smaller metagame players, we had some winners and losers. Scion of Draco Beans decks performed pretty abysmally, as well as uh, Breakfast, Stifle Knot, Maverick, Dredge, and Team of Rhinos. The Epic Storm had a great showing, including Bryant Cook taking third in a challenge, 12 Post, Golgari Scam, Demir Saga Scam, and Painter all had pretty good performances. Jeskai had its first positive performance in months. It converted almost a third of its pilots, so approximately 5% more than expected which is really good. I think I might jam some Jeskai. Overall, I think I've got two thoughts here in terms of the metagame as a whole. I like that decks are returning to the metagame after winter, like Kennedy's coming home to steal my snacks. I hope they stay. Strong affordable decks like Death and Taxes are really important to have around. It doesn't have to be Death and Taxes, but I think something that is affordable and accessible and strong, important to have in the metagame. On the other hand, March was a particularly intense month for high-level play with many big events and a Pro Tour invite on the line, so it's totally possible that this is almost like a month of rest after everyone was tryharding last month. Ultimately, we'll just have to wait and see, but everything in the metagame right now feels relatively beatable. Has Demira Scaminator truly fallen? I've fallen, and I can't get up! If it can't get back up, I imagine it's due to the small quantities of low opportunity cost graveyard hate that have been picked up in main decks. As examples of some of these low opportunity cost main deck pieces of graveyard hate, XJ Cloud has a stream VOD on YouTube with discussion about unlicensed Hurst in Moon Stompy. I've also been seeing many Turbo Goblins lists with a copy main deck, and a lot of the Saga decks are playing a main deck Spell Bomb or Soul Guide Lantern. If you've enjoyed, please let me know what you think, or if you have any feedback, things I could do better. Uh, I am kind of curious what y'all thought about the sort of like ad break, here's a spicy deck. Would love your thoughts on that, whether that was fun or whether that was dumb. So please let me know.